Based on the novel by Dmitry Glukovsky, Metro 2033 immerses you in a new dark age of civilization set in Moscow following the devastating effects of a nuclear holocaust. Listen, what the hell is it? You play Artyom, born in the last days before the apocalypse, and as the game unfolds, you discover that the entire fate of the world rests in your hands. The game has both FPS and RPG elements, but the story is also one of horror, survival, and the supernatural. Game Tank were lucky enough to attend a recent preview event in London where we got the chance to ask Dmitry Glukovsky and THQ brand manager Hugh Bainan about what we can expect from the game. Welcome to Exhibition Hunter! Thanks. Now close your gate. Metro 2033 is your classic single player cinematic linear story driven adventure. So we've borrowed the incredible setting that Dimitri's developed, this post-apocalyptic world, which is really quite unlike um, most, uh, most examples of the post-apocalyptic genre, um, an incredible cast of characters and plot, and we've turned that into what we hope is a really gripping single-player experience. So the game drags you through um, classic set pieces, high action moments, uh, lulls between the, the combat. Um, it's got a really balanced pacing, which is, you know, testament to the to the storytelling there. So um, we think it's going to be a be a fairly uh, compelling gameplay experience. Hello, Artya. You need some weapons? Okay, let's take a look. Because of, of the fact that I'm one of the generation whose mind has been formatted by computer games, it turns out that my book is a good fit for a computer game. The atmosphere, the climate, the spirit, the heroes, the characters, their drama, the emotions and then uh, the, the philosophy. All the key plot points of the plot are there. Uh, the meaning of the book is in the, in the game. The drama of the characters is there. And I'm completely satisfied with that. See. I'm, and I'm amazed, I must say, with the level of CG, of computer graphics. Oh, a tripwire! An excellent way to get rid of the blind and their devils. You get what to do? In terms of specific gameplay techniques to get that player immersed in the world, there are a couple of techniques that we've, we've really used. One of them is the, uh, the aim to try and get rid of the, the HUD, the screen cluster and furniture, as much as possible. Have a lot of the information that's still essential to gamers to be told through physical and graphical means rather than dials and sliders. A great example of this would be your gas mask. Uh, you need your gas mask to venture out into the inhospitable surface or poisoned areas of the underground. When you put it on, you see your hands physically pull it down over your, over your head. You see cracks and imperfections in the mask which can deteriorate and be smashed further. You'll begin to fog up around the edges and condense. You'll hear your breath becoming more and more ragged as you run out of oxygen. So instead of having a simple, you have this much air left, everything is told through visual cues. What you'll find in many games, the plot is often secondary and character is secondary. Often a character will be developed because it has to fit a particular marketing type. So you've got to have your character and he's got to be a bit of a dude with an attitude and, and, and so forth. And that's a device. And then the plots are, how, we want to have a gunfight here. What, what do we need to allow that to happen? With this game, we've already got the characters, we've got the story, we've got this extraordinary level of depth. It's how do we actually bring that to life in a video game, not just reduce it to the superficial level, which is this you know, survival thriller game, but how do we bring that extra layer of depth, whether that's plot, character and meaning into the game. Artyom, according to the book plot, he's in his early 20s, 22 probably. He was born outside on the surface, right before the apocalypse, and he was raised and uh, he grew up already underground. And uh, he doesn't have any recollection of the outside world or even of his mother's face. And uh, it's one of his like, you know, struggles to try to remember how was it. And he wants to return to that world. He wants to, this world to be back. Yeah, he wants to save the humanity after all. He wants to protect his own home station from the threat that appears in the beginning of the game or the book and he he's very passionate about giving the humanity the second chance to get there 
somehow salvaging it, somehow making sure that once man will return to the surface. Basically, he is just a normal, normal guy, and he's like me, or like you, or like anyone who would read the book or play that game. He's natural. He's not your superhero type of person. And this is quite unnatural for all the contemporary gaming market. It's not Kane Lynch. It's not like Freeman, Gordon Freeman. It's not that these, you know, jerks and freaks turned superheroes or, 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 or I don't know, deviant types of kind of Kane and Lynch turned heroes or Liberty City thing. It's just someone who can, you can really believe in. A real character, a teenager, a young boy of his 20s that would naturally react and has very strong personal motivation to do what he does. In this Russian apocalypse, there are ghosts, there are demons, there's spirituality, there's mysticism, and you find some... There is an enemy in yourself, I mean, that's probably even more Russian, that you're not sure whether the bad guys are the bad guys, good guys are the good guys, whether you're yourself or you're, you're, you're a good man, whether the things that you think that are correct, are correct. Be careful, idiot! Metro 2033, both the book and the game, it's not just something one-layered, completely transparent and clear and mechanical. There is magic in it. This game is nothing like you've seen before. I would, uh, I would recommend this game to anyone who's looking for a really compelling and memorable uh, adventure. This, this cinematic style is incredibly difficult to do and that's why actually you don't see too many games of this, this type. The, the ones that you do see that do very well people remember and talk about and I think that's what, um, that's what we're hoping for, for, for Metro. It's going to tell the story that people are actually going to going to remember. The book is set to be released on March the 18th in uh, the Great Britain and about the same date. March the 19th for the game. We played through some early levels and we were blown away by what we saw. The gripping and deep storyline, very detailed graphical touches and some novel gameplay ideas had us hooked and we can't wait for the official release to play the game all the way through. Keep it real, keep it game tank.